Hello and welcome. My name is Pastor James and welcome to There's More to Life where we take Sunday's message and we break it down into more of a conversation piece. I'm going to invite you to like and subscribe, but also to post your comments and give me your take. We're going to take out a very controversial topic over the next few weeks, and you might have noticed that there's going to be an election in about 60 days or less, and things are getting crazy, and they're about to get even more crazy, uh, and it's going to last over the next three to six months. Here's what I can tell you and promise you that come November, the first Tuesday after the first Monday, there's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser. And there's going to be people disappointed and frustrated. So how do we navigate these waters? How do we find hope when the world's gone crazy? That's what our topic is going to be today. And then we're going to also, on this topic of being a, um, a Christian citizen, is we're going to be looking at biblical issues that have entered the political arena. Now, whenever we have this discussion, right away, we have people that just start screaming and hollering separation of church and state, and the church shouldn't be talking about these things. First off, the separation of church and state is not in the Bible, and that's what we want to look to for our truth. In fact, many people are surprised separation of church and state is not even in the Constitution. It was in a letter, it was contained in a letter that Thomas Jefferson wrote. But apart from that, here's what I want to encourage you is that Churches are not getting political. Politics is getting theological. And there's certain biblical topics that we need to look to to understand what God's word says. And so back in the 80s, politics debate was around the economy, was around jobs, was around infrastructure, and, um, and a, around foreign policy. Today, politics has gotten theological. We're defining what is gender. We're defining what is the family. We're, we're looking at all these kind of issues now. And so uh, let's have this discussion. What does God's word say on many topics that have now gone into the cultural political realm? How do we find the peace of God over the next 60 days? That's where we want to drive the discussion today. And then in weeks to come, we'll actually take on specific issues, biblical issues that have migrated into the political arena. So when there's never been divide in our nation and amongst relationships and family like we're seeing today, and it's really a time that we need to draw close into our relationship in Christ and to let our light shine and be a witness. I have friends on both sides of the spectrum here. I have friends and family. I have really good friends and family who are voting for Trump who would just say anybody that would vote for the Democratic ticket couldn't if they were a Christian. That after all, the Democrats are the ones that believe in full-term abortion. And I also have some really good friends who believe a vote for Trump is a love for war, despising immigration and supporting insurrection. And so every day we are seeing news channels that are just proclaiming that if so-and-so fill in the blank gets elected, that the world as we know it is gonna come to an end. And in all of this chaos, we are being told how to think, what to think, and that anybody that doesn't agree with us cannot be trusted. In other words, we're being discipled by newsreels and podcasts and television to be cynical and critical of what other people think, and really being discipled that if anybody that doesn't agree with us, we need to criticize, call names, disparage their reputation. Uh, with it. So how do we navigate the chaos that we're going to be living in in the, in the days and the weeks and the months to come? Here's the first thing I want to give you. The first point as a believer is we've got to put our hope in Jesus. Now, I know this sounds real basic and everybody goes, yeah, I get that. I know, but, but our hope cannot be in a political system or at a political party or even in an individual. Our hope is going to be in Christ, in Christ alone. As I said, come November, there's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser. And regardless of the outcome, God himself is in control. In John 14, 27, it says this, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give, uh, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not be afraid. There's a peace that will only come from Christ alone. Your peace will not come only if your candidate wins, but it's got to be rooted in Christ. 
win or lose, uh, Christ is going to be in charge and has a plan. God the Father is not in heaven wringing his hands right now going, oh dear, what are we going to do if this person wins or this person loses? He has a perfect plan. Colossians 3.1 says this, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you, uh, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ God. My life is no longer my own. It belongs to Christ. I have got to put my hope now in him and not in a political system or in a, a particular person. So put your hope in him. And, and, in, and it's not only, I, don't, I, I can't put my hope in a political party. I don't even want to put my hope in, in our country. My hope is in Christ. And so as we take a look at this Isaiah 45, 5, I want to give you God's word to build your faith. It says, I am the Lord and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. I will strengthen you, though you have not acknowledged me. And so it is to realize that God is always in control regardless of the outcome. Put your hope in Christ. That's the best thing I can give you. Number two, I urge you to vote. So many people I'm talking today are just so fed up with the craziness, with the disinformation, the lies, the accusations from both sides that they're just barraged and, or inundated with election stuff. And they're seeing uh, emotions run rampant on social media. So many people I know said, I'm just not going to vote. I'm done. I'm tapping out. We have an obligation as believers in Christ. Christ or Christians is small Christ or representatives of Christ. We are to be his voice. So I urge you to vote in this. In Michigan, which is where uh, I live, it's a swing state. And this election will be determined by just 100,000 people. Now, there's more people that live in Calhoun County, in the county I live in, uh, that, that, there's more people that live in my county than what will determine the election. Your vote uh, makes all the difference. And even if you're in another state, you still have a responsibility to be uh, uh, just a, a civic leader and, um, and to cast your vote. So I'm urging you, to understand what the Word of God says, and, and to vote with that mindset. In Proverbs 29.2, it says, When the righteous thrive, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. You are the righteousness of Christ, and you have a civic responsibility and a Christian responsibility to be able to cast your vote. In Proverbs 24.11, it says, Rescue those who are unjustly sentenced to death. Don't stand back and let them die. Don't try to disclaim. And so uh, responsibility by saying you didn't know about it. For God, who knows all hearts, knows yours, and he knows you knew, and he will reward everyone according to their deeds. And so I just urge you to take the responsibility that you've been trusted with to steward the freedom that you have, that many Americans have given their life so that you and I can exercise our freedom to vote and it's an opportunity to express our faith. I, I'm just telling you, you can't sit this one out. Here's the third thing I'm going to give you uh, as we go into this crazy cycle, and that is be kingdom-minded. Um, I understand there can be other mindsets. I'm not going to speak to those because I'm not an expert. Uh, as a pastor, I look to the Word of God. There's only one mindset or a platform that I feel a measure of expertise to encourage you in, but I do want to acknowledge there's different mindsets, and God has given you a free will. You can choose any mindset you, you would like. Um, I, I just I want to answer the question, well, why aren't you talking about this and this and this? I'm just going to talk about a kingdom mindset. So, for instance, there's a union mindset you can have. I grew up in a union family. My mom worked for the UAW. My dad was union steward. I get it. One of the things you can vote in is with a, a union mindset. You can have a conservative mindset. You can have a liberal mindset. And trust me, there's a difference between a Christian conservative or and a Christian liberal than a conservative Christian or a liberal Christian. If you are Christian first, that's a mindset, a kingdom mindset. Uh, there is a gender mindset. You know, some people might go, we just need to break the ceiling, the lid, uh, go woman power, and you can have a, gend uh, a, a gender mindset. 
There can be a race mindset. But here's the thing, as a Christian, I want to encourage you to have a kingdom mindset when we fulfill our obligation to vote. And there's biblical issues that have now crossed over into the political arena. And so Philippians 3.18 says this, For as I have often told you before and now, say again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is their shame. Their minds are on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await the Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I just want to encourage you that our citizenship is not here in the United States. If you're a believer in Christ, your citizenship is in the kingdom of God. And, and so it's with this mindset that I, that I want to exercise as a Christian, my obligation to vote is to have a kingdom mindset. In 2 Corinthians 5.10, it says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. There's going to be a day that every believer will stand before the throne of God and have to give an account for the things they did, and that including whether we vote or not vote and how we choose to vote, that we're accountable in Christ. And so have a kingdom mindset. Look to God's word. I, I grew up with a lot of opinions on things, but when I gave my life to Christ, I surrendered my agenda and I pick up his agenda. And now it's his truth that I want to lead and guide in all my actions. Here's the last thing I'm going to give you on how to survive the craziness over the next 60 days and beyond, and that is to be the light. Man, put your hope in Christ. Be sure to participate and vote. Have a kingdom mindset. But here's the fourth thing is is really to be the light. The crazier it gets out there, especially on social media, the darker it is, the greater the opportunity for the church, for you and I to let our light so shine. And that is to bring hope, truth, love, compassion, grace. Just think of the fruits of the spirit and love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness. And here's the big one, self-control. Boy, if we walk in the fruits of the Spirit, we can really let our light shine and make an impact in, in a crazy world out there. In Matthew 5, 14, it says, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under the bowl. Instead, they put it in a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your heavenly Father. One way we can let our light shine, some practical tips that I would encourage you over the next 60 days is just turn off the news channel and get out of the echo chamber. Um, I used to just be a cable news junkie. And, and I know it, it, it crushes the soul without you even knowing about it. And it makes you cynical, negative, and hopeless. You, you think it's intellectually stimulating, but it's actually making you dumb. Because right now it is 5% information or news and 95% uh, commentary. And so get out of the echo chamber, get alone with God and hear the heart and the voice of God. Find him in his word. Number two is be gracious with your thoughts online um, about political issues. Real meaning and motive and heart can't be discerned online. It's easy to take things out of context. And, and here's the thing, a post online, I don't think has ever changed anybody's mind. <laughs> and so um, just be careful of, of how you engage on social media, be the light. And then the last thing I would give you is, uh, I get it, there's a lot of stuff happening in the world and, and we all have opinions. But maybe just I want to encourage you to just kind of bump up the grace and love and, and maybe just dial back a little bit of the tone of harshness. And if you do these things and you put your hope in Christ, um, you're going to find a peace that the world is struggling to find, especially uh, in a world that's gone crazy. Time is short. Keep your eyes on the prize and put your hope in Christ. I'm Pastor James. Hey, that's my take. I would love to hear your take. Be sure to drop a comment and join us in the coming weeks as we're going to be taking a look at some very sensitive topics, but the Word of God does speak clearly on. God bless you.